All right, now when we talk about gaming laptops from Acer, we generally talk about the Predator series, right? Whether it's the Predator Helios or the Budget Predators. But the normal Aspire series doesn't really come to mind, right? Well, unfortunately, it should because Acer has actually been launching pretty good budget gaming laptops under the Acer lineup, which surprisingly have been doing pretty well in the market. Of course, it hasn't gotten as much attention as your Lenovo Legion or the Asus stuff, but considering the new Acer Aspire 5 that we have right here, well, you should definitely check it out. For a price tag of just rupees 60,000, the Acer Aspire 5 gets a lot of boxes checked. But as is the case with budget gaming laptops, compromises were definitely made. But what are those compromises and is the laptop still worth it? Let's find out. This is one from GTR and you're watching my in-depth review of the Acer Aspire 5 2022 edition. Let's get started. All right, so first things first, let's talk about the design. It's equal parts good and bad. The good thing is that it's very subtle and minimal. The branding, the linear design, it's all very straightforward and actually professional looking. I mean, you can legit carry it to your classroom or even your office meeting and nobody would suspect it of being a gaming laptop. It looks very professional and very clean. Now, of course, that is not in everyone's interest. A lot of people, when they're buying a gaming laptop, they want that RGB flair. If you're one of those, then this laptop is not for you. But if you're someone who wants a dual purpose laptop that you can carry to school, carry to college, carry to work, wherever you want to, and then come back home and even play games on it, this one fits the bill perfectly. Now, one thing I would still like to highlight is that the quality of the laptop, I mean, the build quality especially, could have been better. Now, see, I understand that the emphasis went on to the CPU and GPU prowess, especially when we talk about this price segment, but the sheer amount of flex that we're seeing on the body is just not acceptable. Sure, the lid here is aluminum, but the rest of the body is plastic. Now, if you're a college student who's mostly going to be carrying this in a basic backpack, well, just be careful in terms of the handling. Other than that, the laptop weighs about 1.8 kgs and is definitely quite portable. In terms of connectivity, you get a barrel plug followed by an RJ45 port, a full-size HDMI port, two USB 3.2 ports, and a USB Type-C Thunderbolt 4 port on the left side. Over to the right side, you have a Kensington lock, another USB A port, a 3.5 headphone jack, and the LED indicators. All right, now let's talk about the display. See, with most budget gaming laptops, you see a lot of compromises primarily in the display segment. Either they compromise on the refresh rate by limiting it to just 60 hertz, or they compromise on the color reproduction, making it not that color accurate, or they compromise on the viewing angles, making well the viewing angles terrible, or having it set at a very low brightness, thus resulting in limited outdoor usage. So which route has Acer gone with? Unfortunately, I would have to say it's a mix of all of those things. See, right off the bat, it's not a terrible display. I mean, I'll give credit where it's due. It's a decent panel. And as far as color reproduction in general goes for a gaming laptop, it's fine for most part when you consider the price. I mean, I've seen more shabbier displays under 70,000 gaming laptops, and this one is definitely better than those, despite being a TFT panel. However, the fact that it's just 60 hertz just does not sit right with me. It's 2022 and 60 hertz just does not cut it. See, I'm not saying that the RTX 2050 is a beast of a GPU, but it definitely deserves a more higher refresh rate panel than just 60 hertz. I mean, I'm not asking for 140 hertz, 120 hertz, even 90 hertz would have been fine. But 60 hertz is just way too low if you're going to be calling it a gaming laptop. And the display also claims to be an IPS panel, which offers decent viewing angles. I won't say they are excellent, but if you are sitting with a friend and consuming content on the laptop, it's fine. Just don't include a lot of people around. Speaking of watching content, like I said, the color reproduction is fine for normal users. And uh, if you're watching Netflix or Prime Video, content consumption should not be an issue. Aiding all of that is the audio department, which once again is decent enough. It's not super loud or anything, but yeah, it should get the job done for most folks. Moving on, let's talk about the keyboard. And trust me, I'll just keep things very simple here. This is an excellent keyboard. Like seriously, the layout, the spacing, the feedback is really good. The backlighting here also works very well and is decently bright. Of course, the color combination makes typing in the day a bit of a hassle, but I can assure you that your hands can easily adapt to the layout and soon you won't even have to look at the keyboard. 
One more thing that I like here is that Acer has included the numpad here, which I personally like. Below the keyboard, there's a touchpad and once again, works very well. It's well sized, the gestures work well, and there's good palm rejection too. And as an added bonus, you get a fingerprint scanner, which in my testing worked 9 out of 10 times, which again is pretty commendable. Alright, so let's talk about the performance now. So for about 60 grand, our unit here comes equipped with the 12th gen Intel Core i5 1240p processor coupled with 8GB of DDR4 RAM clocked at 3200MHz. For GPU prowess, you have the NVIDIA RTX 2050 laptop GPU, which definitely is the highlight here. Now, don't get me wrong, the 12th gen Intel Core i5 obviously does work very well and obviously manages to steal some of the spotlight as you can see in the benchmarks on your screen. However, the highlight is the GPU because it's tutored to be a major improvement over the NVIDIA iMac series that we usually see in this form factor at this price point. Well, the benchmarks definitely stand for it. The laptop can easily run AAA titles like Far Cry 6 and Forza Horizon 5 at low settings for an average of 55 to 60 FPS. For esports titles like Valorant and Rocket League, you can easily touch 110 to 120 FPS. But once again, to actually make use of those frame rates, you'll have to use an external display. Also, a small tip for performance users, whenever you're running games on it or just any high intensity task, make sure to press the function plus F keys together. This will just switch the power and fan profiles and make sure to just set it to turbo for the most and the best performance. Now, in terms of thermals, the laptop definitely stays cool and does not heat up a lot. What's more is that it does it while staying relatively silent too which once again is a good part. Now, of course, this is anyway a mobile GPU, so it's not like the laptop was anyway going to heat up quite a lot, but still, credit where it's due, Acer has definitely done a good job of keeping things cool. Lastly, we have the battery life. Now, the laptop comes with a 50 watt hour battery and Acer claims that the laptop should easily last you five to six hours on a single charge. In my testing, I was averaging around four and a half hours, which isn't far off and is definitely good. As for charging, while the laptop ships with a 90 watt AC adapter, you can also juice it up using a USB PD charger if you have one. Which brings us to the big question. Is the Acer Aspire 5 worth it? Yes, absolutely. But not in the way that most folks would actually expect it to. See, the Acer Aspire 5 is by no means the best gaming laptop in this price point. But that's also because we've come to expect a lot of different things from the general definition of a gaming laptop. In my understanding, the Acer Aspire 5 is not a gaming laptop by any means. It's definitely not a gaming laptop. What it is, is basically a good laptop for college students who can use it not just for their work and productivity, but can also use it to game a bit on the side. And if you're one of those, this is the perfect thing for you. Because if you look about the ideal gaming laptop definition, then it just means carrying those beefy machines with big fans. And you know, that just cancels out the portability factor of a laptop. If you're a college student or even a work professional, you need a laptop that's portable enough. This thing checks that. Of course, if you want to play esports titles, just plug it into an external monitor and you can enjoy your games at 120 FPS, no complaints. So yeah, once you have a clear understanding of what the Acer Aspire 5 really is, and if that thing is in sync with what kind of a user you are, I can wholeheartedly recommend this laptop to you. And well, that was it. If you found this video helpful, make sure to let us know, give us a thumbs up and subscribing to our channel for more awesome tech content. Till then, this is Vaughn from GTR and I'll see you in the next one.